Welcome back to the next video in the one ton build. We're back out here at Josh's of course, and today we're going to put the Dana 60 underneath the front, see how it looks, check out the alignment. And as promised, we're going to remove the eight and a quarter and we're going to install the shackle relocation brackets and much more. So let's get started. Since we are beginning the final stages of this build, Today, I'm going to show you some of the fun parts that are going up underneath the goat. So I started sanding down the axle, but Russell, who was Josh's brother-in-law, came over and they had another idea. They wanted to move the goat. Holy crap. Yeah, so what we'll do is we'll high lift this up, pull this out, put the orange jack stands here to lower this down to those jack stands so then we can just lift it off the jack stand with the jack. Okay. So I'm going to include the video of us moving the goat. Now I'm not saying it's the safest and I do not recommend that you do this at your home, but it's the way that we did it and I'm just going to let y'all see what we did. So be kind in the comments. We just got to go down quite a bit. Yeah, I feel like it's swaying so much. It's like I'm flow dancing right now. Josh. My hands are clammy. Aww. It's your first dance. This is sketchy. I've got one point of contact in the front. Ooh. Ooh. I got it. No, it's the high lift. Dude. Yeah, I know. I'm not liking the angle in the front of the... Oh. Um, <laughs> let's grab some blocks or use the jack and hit the bottom of the pump. Okay. She's slipping out of the fair lead. Yeah. We use some three inch square stock to put on top of the lift so that we can get rid of this high lift. Woo! Good teamwork, guys. <laughs> that gets a little nerve wracking right here. <laughs> right here, Josh is slowly lowering the jack. We touch him? Not yet. We got another inch and a half. There we go. That was all or nothing there. Woo! Pulled a bug. I said that he pulled a bug because I cannot slowly lower a jack. Oh, that's a raked Jeep. Yeah. It's still going. It's still loading the rear. Alright. Okay, ready? Oh, holy crap, guys. Well, that didn't take too long, and with really good teamwork, we moved the Jeep. Hey, hold on. Oh. About three feet. But we're not done yet. Good. Great job, guys. Yeah. <sighs> that was really scary for me. <laughs> We've done worse. We've done worse. We still need to raise the goat to fit that one tall jack stand. How many times have y'all done this before? First time. <laughs> Shit, Josh. Spinning the jack to make room for the high lift. Once again. Back to the sketch. Back to the sketch. <laughs> high sketch. Josh decides to slow dance with the goat one more time. Can you slide that underneath? Right there? Right there? Uh, hold on, I'll double that. Okay. Okay. Alright, we're sitting on it. See you. Yeah? yeah? This was not a how-to, but we did get it moved three feet. After the stress of moving the goat, we <laughs> needed a break. I have, I have the worst balance ever. I do too. I'm like a drunk ballerina. Yeah, I, can't <laughs> on it. I can't either. I used to be able to do some stuff like this, Haley. And then you gotta try to do this. <laughs> all right, all right, all right. Enough playing around. Let's get to the build. 
The eight and a quarter is coming out, so the tires have to come off. Then we drop the axle down on some jack stands. So Josh and I got to talking about the frame stiffeners. Now this would be the time to install them, but maybe not. Interesting. Because before when we were talking about frame stiffeners, it was welding coil buckets and doing ah. coils in the back. So you have all that weight pressure on this. This is spread out. That makes sense. Since we're staying with leaf springs, we will just hold on to those rear frame stiffeners for when or if we decide to upgrade to coils. We could just keep them. Mm -hmm. Moving on, we have stored the Dana 30 long enough in their garage and it's time to clean it and sell it. For the first time ever, we are going to see the Dana 60 up under the goat. Love. Oh my goodness! That's a moment right there. She'll have some Yukon purple on her, of course. Yukon diff cover. You gotta imagine the whole picture. This is unseen. That's yeah. right. That's a part that you guys have not seen yet. We got these from JKS. Some Hydraulic bumps. bump stops. So this guy here adjust your ride height by inches, like we've got one to three, in, I mean, and all the play in between, right? Up to three inches, is that correct? Yeah, I think it was, yeah, one to three. And you adjust your ride height with this collar, just like a coil over. You have your top collar that you can adjust your ride height, your preload. So there's your bump, but I think you might be able to use these coils because that's exciting news. There are, you have your original coil spacers, which technically we can cut the center out, slide this over and be able to adjust even more. Oh, wow. If needed to be. For and say you cut this piece off, this bolts into place, welds, bolts, whatever you want to do. Then your bump cane goes in and you can adjust your bump all the way down to here. This is gonna be so cool. So cool. Now, have you ever worked with these before? I've seen them happen. When I worked at ARB, uh, one of the guys, Matt, had these on here. And when I had a Cherokee back then, I couldn't afford them. Yeah, they're not cheap, holy crap. But coilovers are $1,000 a corner. These are $500 a corner. Technology has gone up so much now where mm -hmm. you can get a progressive coil. Tighter coils in the top, so it acts like a coilover. I guess a, a way you could put it would be, I hate saying this, but a poor man coilover. <laughs> it is cheaper, which these are not cheap, but like I said, but I almost think you're not messing around with these as much coilovers. You're constantly pulling coils off, getting your weight settings right. These, you, they make them specifically for front Cherokee. They know what the weight is in the front of the Cherokee. I think we'll end up building a platform in here and gusset, putting some gussets in here and doing a flat, piece of flat steel, bolting this into it. But I think we're, this axle is sitting pretty close to ride height. Wow. And that so. diff clearance, sorry to say, change subjects, but that diff, it's looking pretty low to the ground. Let's see if we can do some perspective. Josh pulls out the 35s for this example. To bolt this 35 on, we'd have to go up higher. Okay. Because your center of your axle looks like it's roughly, it need to come up. <laughs> so we technically need to come up a couple inches to let's say if this was a five lug coming off the 60 yeah that 60 would have to come up which would lift the jeep more we'd probably have to come up a couple more inches yeah. you're probably going to be mounted with your tire sitting about right there with this placement right here yep. yeah you might be yeah we got five an inch half inch back. You might be somewhere right. Yeah, I'd say you're probably roughly right there. That'd be exciting. You guys haven't, you two 
you haven't seen. You two people, you have not seen. <laughs> they haven't seen what we've done in Ravine, the cross members. They have not. I lost that footage. I just haven't told you. <laughs> we will come back to that cross number. Ah, but there is a placement for the long arm, though. Oh, no way! It. No way! So that will That's probably it. come back about another inch. An inch? Inch or two in, about an inch and a half back. But yeah, we'll be pretty close to where we're sitting. If this works with that drive line and that length, we talked about seeing if Tom Woods can do a new yoke with a this new slip yoke. A new slip yoke. I see. Okay, Joe. Joe's actually on his way. We're making lists of what to order when we're not here, so we'll just have to keep doing that. Both Joe and Russell show back up, and Russell brought with him four built jack stands. Check these out. We currently just have this front bumper supported by one brace, by one jack stand. Now we got these four brand, from a friend. These four jack stands that are big and beefy and taller. So we're just going to switch them out. Okay. More stable. More stable, yes. Yeah, you're in my inside. Are you there, bug? I'm there. Okay. Oh. Man, that wasn't much. <laughs> All right. Didn't even get one click. <laughs> and we switch out the rear so that we can get to work back there. Yeah. It's a big Jeep. <laughs> Holy guacamole. Those are right under where the bumper braces go in? Yes. Okay. Right where it catches to the frame. Okay. What was that? Did a bug. <laughs> oh, he did a bug. Seems to be sturdy. How's it look? Were you nervous? I've been nervous all day. All right. <laughs> <laughs> but the boys, they they work well together. They well, everybody's being cautious. Nobody no wants one. a jeep to fall. Yeah, no one. That would be a big old uh, mess. Josh had a truck fall. Josh had a truck fall. Mm -hmm. And we played a joke on BJ. Uh -huh. The back end fell. And uh, was sitting legs. on the ground, and I BJ just pulled into the driveway at uh, Lewis's house, and we're like, Josh, stick your legs under there. Oh. And I fully and like was is. like right here, and I'm like, BJ, ah! and, and me and Nick were just like, uh, oh, that's <laughs> awesome. BJ come running over, didn't yes. ask a question. He was just like, Rah! that's and funny. Then I was like, here, let me help. And then he's like, screw you guys. <laughs> There she is. Thanks, baby. You said, film if anything exciting happened. <laughs> I said, the bug is exciting to me. Now we're switching gears to remove the eight and a quarter. What's next, guys? What's next? Don't forget to like and subscribe. <laughs> yeah, there you go. <laughs> That's my buddy for me. Josh battled with the e-brake for a minute, but he got it disconnected. E-brake. Yay. Oh, I need to come back a little bit. Nope. Pull just, that drive nope. line off. Just uh, go straight down. We'll deal with the drive line in a second. There we go. Amazing. There she is. There it is. I'm sorry? Okay. All right, that's the old stuff. The eight and the quarter and the dirty 30 out. Just as we promised. There you go, bud. Oh, thanks, baby. You're good. Question is, how many people liked and subscribed? That is a great question. Have you liked and subscribed? I have. And also, if you guys have made it this far in the video, give me a thumbs up in the comment section and let me know that you guys have made it through this far.
we are replacing those with new leaf spring relocation brackets that we got from Russell. Thanks, Russell. We also got the U-Bolt Eliminator Kit from Rough Stuff. And everything is starting to come together. What is that underneath the goat? Goodness gravy. So now that we got both axles underneath the goat, it's time for things to get real. I got more parts to order. We need to do the axle assemblies. We need brakes. We need a lot more. So y'all just stay tuned and we'll see you on the next adventure on the goat build. Bug out. Bu bullet. Four rocks. Bully boy, you're Four so. Four <laughs> rocks. So we do a shotgun throw? Shotgun throw? Oh, that is, if that's not a... Normally, I'll like drop one. One. I was like, man. He had four. Bully's got four to choose from. He's so confused.